now we're going to learn about a new problem called difference problems. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my presentation here so I can show you a little bit about difference problems. So we have our total problem, which are two parts put together for a total. And now I want to talk about difference problems. This is, we have to go through this quickly. This is what I did with all of you. All right, now we're going to talk about difference problems. This is another type of schema, another problem type. And in difference problems, I have two amounts. And in a difference problem, we compare those amounts for a difference. So I have a bigger amount, and I have a smaller amount, and I'm comparing those amounts. Now that's different. In a total problem, we have two parts, and what do we do to those parts? Put them together. Put them together. In a difference problem, I have two amounts, and I'm not, am I putting them together? No. I'm comparing them. So if you want to go ahead and write the definition for a difference problem, a difference in problem is where you have amounts compared for a difference. The very top line right there on the slide. It's two amounts compared for a difference. And just like I said, I like to use my hands for total problems, I like to use my hands for difference problems. I like to think I have a bigger amount and a smaller amount, and I kind of like move my hands back and forth to pretend that I'm comparing those two amounts. So that's how I always think about a difference problem. Now some examples of difference problems. There's a few of them here. I'll look at this first one right here. Sinead has nine apples. Amanda has four apples. How many more apples does Sinead have than Amanda? So there, Sinead has some apples, and Amanda has some apples, and I'm comparing the difference. Comparing, a lot of times, there are words that cue us into the comparing. How many more apples? I could also ask that question, is how many fewer apples, or how much less does Amanda have? So there, I'm comparing these two amounts for a difference. Now, I could also ask the questions that are at the bottom of this page. Sinead has five more. Five more is telling me about the difference in the amount of apples. If Amanda has four, how many does Sinead have? And I can also ask, Amanda has five fewer, which tells me about the difference. If Sinead has nine, how many does Amanda have? But in all difference problems, we have two amounts, and we're comparing them for a difference. What are we doing in a difference problem? We have two what? Two amounts, and what are we doing with those? Comparing them for a difference. We have two amounts comparing for a difference. Say that with me. Two amounts comparing for a difference. All right. So we do have a difference equation and a difference picture that you can use. So I'll show you what the difference equation is right here. My difference equation is I have a bigger amount. So I'm going to write a big B. And I'm comparing it, which means I'm going to subtract a smaller amount. So I'm going to write a little s. And when I compare the bigger and smaller amount, I'm comparing them for the difference. What letter could we use to represent difference? It starts with the letter, yes, D, yes. B minus S equals D. So anytime I recognize a word problem as a difference problem, I can write B minus S equals D and organize my information in that way. I can also draw a picture. So here I'll just do circle minus circle equals square, and that big minus small equals difference. Now your equations and your pictures here, they're just helpful ways to organize word problem information. So we already solved a total problem, so what I'd like to do now is solve a difference problem. So if you'll pancake flip your page over, we're going to go to this story here about Farmer Now we've learned about two problem types. We've learned about total problems, and what happens in a total problem? We have, uh -huh. 
Yep, we find the total. We have parts put together for a total. But what happens in a difference problem? We have amounts and we do what? Do we put them together? No, we compare them for a difference. So let's figure out what's going on in this problem with Farmer Hank. How can I work through a word problem? What's my strategy? Yes, ma'am. UPS check. UPS check. I like how you remembered that. Let's go ahead and write this to the <coughs> side to help us remember it as well. So what's our strategy? We're going to use UPS check. Say that with me. UPS check. What strategy are we going to use? UPS check. And the U stands for understand. How can I possibly understand a word problem? Think about it. Everyone? You can read it. Oh, I like that idea. All right, I'd like you to read this to yourself, and then I'm going to ask someone to read it aloud. Raise your hand if you would like to read this problem aloud. Yes, sir. Farmer Hank has six four cows and horses. He has four horses. She also has nine chicks. He also has how many cows does he have? Very nice. That's great. So we read it, and now I want you to tell me in your own words what you're trying to figure out in this problem. So go ahead and think about it, and then share your idea with your table, and then we'll talk about it as a group. Difference because six is the difference in the number of cows 
of horses. Now, I'm also going to use something else in this sentence that's helpful. More cows than horses. I want you to picture this. If you have more cows, is more, does more cows, does that mean you're going to, the cows are going to be the bigger amount or the smaller amount? The bigger, you're right. Why is it the bigger amount? Because there are more. If I said there were fewer cows, then cows would be the smaller. But does this problem say cows are few, the fewer? Yeah. No, it says there are more cows. So what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a B above cows and an S above horses so that I always remember that the cows are the bigger amount and the horses are the smaller amount. Then I can start to fill in the rest of my graphic organizer. He has four horses. Is four a number that we need? Yes. yes. And four, is it the bigger amount or the smaller? Smaller. smaller. So I check out four and I write it there in the smaller box. I keep reading. He also has nine chickens. What do you think about nine chickens? Do we need that number? No. Tell me why don't we need that number? How many cows? Does it ask about chickens? No. no. So what could we do with that? Could we, should I circle it? No, what could we do? Scratch it out. Scratch it out. I'm going to cross it out. I, you know, it's nice to know that he has nine chickens, but I don't need to know that information. And there's a fancy word for that. It's called irrelevant information. And now I say, how many cows does he have? Do we know how many cows? Yeah. Not yet. We're going to solve for that. I'm going to put a question mark there. So I need to figure out the bigger amount, which is the number of cows. So let's see. Question mark minus 4 equals 6. Hmm. What can I use in place of the question mark so that that number sentence would be true? Look at it. Think about it. I'll give everyone a chance to come up with an answer. Everyone? Ten. ten. So question mark equals ten. And ten what? Ten. Chickens? Cows. Cows, that's right. Very nice. And look what I underlined earlier. Cows up there. I write cows down here. I'm going to circle it to help my teacher know that that's my answer. And now we solved it. Now I need to check my work. And the easiest way to do that, I didn't leave a ton of room here, is to plug that 10 back in for the question mark. Does 10 minus 4 equal 6? Yes. All right. So how many cows does farm, the farmer have? 10. 10. Very nice. So you all just solved your first difference problem. But we're not